Hey, teacher, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Very happy to be here with you. And how are you? How is your son? Thank you. Very nice. Perfect. It's very nice to hear that one. So we're going to wait a few minutes and then we're going to start a class. I think uh, that you saw the, the message on the WhatsApp yep. platform. Uh, so uh, we will start the other model in the next year, yeah? That is correct. Next year.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you this last week. So next Monday, we will be finishing this module. Everybody saw the message already in the WhatsApp group. So we're gonna be starting next uh, class, next module uh, in January, hopefully in January. So next year, so you are going to have some vacations, right? Um, Okay, so, and uh, also remember that you will be receiving the um, the INSA for survey this week. So that is something that we're going to do together this incoming Monday. And uh, yes, of course, you can check with your human resources to uh, department to check if they have the documentation so you can start the process and uh, be ready for the next, for the next class next year, okay? Also, please remember to finish the platform this Sunday. Sunday is the last day for us to finish everything there. Okay. Very good. So we are going to start by checking the um, attendance now that we have everything discussed about the platform. So, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Yes, my teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good, perfect. Okay, so we are going to start the class and the first thing that we're going to check is, well, I have a question for you. So yesterday we were, uh, we were discussing a little bit about uh, training. So, what are the steps for you to start planning a training? What do you think? The steps for you to start planning? Okay, maybe teacher, uh, to know the, uh, for example, the, the operative annual plan, maybe, yeah, in order to, uh, prioritize yeah prioritize yeah prioritize uh, the topics that you will deliver or that you will ask for being delivered um after this i i think this is the the main import or the most important uh, step previously to the to the training yeah or yeah, to the training, <clears throat> because uh, you have there the um, the um, how to say this the main topic that you will have to ask for. Yeah, and after that, obviously, uh, what what are the maybe the knowledge levels of the people who will take this training and I don't know, but 
uh, I, I think this this is the one of the um, yeah main main topics previously to to deliver or to ask for a, a training yeah to know what what are you pursuit maybe in the year uh, in order to complete or your or all of your annual planning yeah okay very good definitely so you need to know about the budget about the uh, the plans the objectives for the year things like that very good what other things are important whenever you are going to start planning a training obviously the the needs of the company or the mission of the company what are uh, intended to do and uh, what are the personal needs to do or to accomplish the mission and the vision of the, of the company of the uh, how can we go together because it is important all all of the personal talking the same language all of the personal uh, knowing the same procedures and uh, all of the uh, employees knowing what is uh, their role in, inside the company what does what is expected they do in in, in their position and uh, it, it is important to 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 uh, sometimes uh, the, there are uh, some uh, internal training about uh, this this uh, strategic planning and uh, uh, obviously our external training to accomplish so to complement what are uh, we doing as a company and i think it's important uh, that all of the people need to know the vision the mission the values and all of the uh, employees need to uh, talk the same language and uh, the same ideas to get the, the same purpose of, of uh, the company. I think. Okay, yeah, actually that is very important. Definitely the need. I mean, you need to identify uh, what new skills the employees need to learn or what skills they need to improve, right? And uh, yes, uh, also about the mission, the vision, what are the objectives for the whole company? So what you want to improve as an entity, things that are important. Good. Any other opinion? Uh, what do you need to to think before what you need to do, what steps you consider whenever you are going to start planning a training? Well, first secret, I guess that you need to uh, make a, a plan because when you uh, when you create a training, you will use uh, resources. So first of all, I guess that you need to see the 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 how much money you will uh, spend or how much money you will uh, invest on that training. And after that, uh, you have to check uh, the topic that you will uh, discuss with the, with the trainees. Because if not, maybe you will waste some company resources. Very so, good. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I guess that that is the most important. Okay. Actually, that is very, very important. Definitely to check about, yeah, to be sure that the resources are going to be used in a very good way. That is something that actually is, I mean, it's, it's a must, right? That is something that definitely we need to, we need to consider into this. Good. Any other opinion? Nothing else. Oh, Maybe oh go teacher, ahead. Uh, also, uh, to know if you hire a uh, Maybe I don't know if that's correct. A foreigner institution, yeah. Okay. Or a foreign foreign a training center to know about a, the knowledge level of the instructor, yeah. 
in order to uh, improve uh, the knowledge level, obviously, of your employees, because if they are at the same level with the same uh, um, knowledge, uh, it will be at the end like, uh, okay, it's another training, but no, it's non uh, novedoso. Um, innovative or novelty. Okay. It's not it's no innovative, innovative at all. And uh, the performance of the training <clears throat> and the trainees could be decreased because of, of this situation. Yeah. Uh, if you are uh, training, uh, for example, uh, a team. Uh, for, for example, in Cisco Technologies, obviously the, the, the trainer, yeah, must, must be a, an expert on this uh, situation, not only in theories, in, in theoretical situations, but also in, in practice situations, because uh, that you are, because what you are looking for is maybe to solve some issues or some situations that are uh, in your in your life, uh, but in your working life at your office or some situation that uh, could be um, or could improve your actual, for example, your actual uh, environment in order to to increase the productivity or something like this. Okay. So I think uh, it, it, uh, it will be one situation that you have to consider or you must to consider, yeah. Yeah, that is true. Actually, that is uh, something that we have checked before, right? So of course you cannot train somebody more if you don't have the knowledge. So you need to have an expert. You need to have somebody that actually is going to help you improve, uh, go beyond, and well, sometimes it's possible to do it there in the in the company, but sometimes it's better for you to hire either a company or either a uh, a person that is going to be like an expert for that one. So definitely that is something that is very, very important. Nice. Okay, so we are going to uh, check a little video about this and then we are going to to discuss about it. Let me just go there, here is it. Okay, there we go. How to start a training business. This video is designed to help you determine if your training business idea is feasible. To identify questions and problems you will face in converting your idea into reality. And to prepare for starting your training business. The video features all the essential aspects you must consider before you start your training business. This will allow you to predict problems before they happen and keep you from losing your shirt on dog business ideas. At the end of the video there are three valuable free gifts waiting for you. A token of appreciation for watching this video. Operating a successful training business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication and willingness to sacrifice to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills and techniques if your business is to be successful. Identify your reasons. As a first and often overlooked step, ask yourself why you want to own your own business. Check the reasons that apply to you. 1. Freedom from the 9 to 5 daily work routine. 2. Being your own boss. 3. Doing what you want, when you want to do it. 4. Improving your standard of living. 5. Boredom with your present job. 6. Having a product or service for which you feel there is a demand. Some reasons are better than others, none are wrong.
However, be aware that there are trade-offs, for example, you can escape the 9 to 5 daily routine, but you may replace it, with a 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. routine. Preliminary analysis, major flaws. A yes response, to questions such as the following, would indicate that your business idea, has little chance for success. 1. Are there any causes, such as, restrictions, monopolies, shortages, that make any of the required factors of operation unavailable, such as, unreasonable cost, or scarce skills? 2. Are capital requirements for entry, or continuing operations, excessive? 3. Is adequate financing hard to obtain? 4. Are there factors, that prevent effective marketing? A self-analysis. Starting a business requires certain personal characteristics. This portion of the video deals with you, the individual. This next group of questions though brief, is vitally important to the success of your plan. It covers the physical, emotional, and financial strains, you will encounter in starting a new business. Are you aware that running your own business, may require working 12 to 16 hours a day, 6 days a week, and maybe even Sundays and holidays? Do you have the physical stamina, to handle the workload and schedule? Do you have the emotional strength, to withstand the strain? Are you prepared, if needed, to temporarily lower your standard of living, until your business is firmly established? Is your family prepared to go along with the strains, they too must bear? Are you prepared to lose your savings, in case your plan fails? Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand, for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time, and money, in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise, will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of, no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a, yes. 1. Do you know, who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand, their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand, how your business compares, with your competitors? 8. 
Will your business be conveniently located for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. So far, this video has helped you identify questions and problems you will face, converting your idea into reality, and determining if your idea is feasible. Through self-analysis, you have learned of your personal qualifications and deficiencies, and through market analysis, you have learned if there is a demand for your product or service. The following questions are grouped according to function, they are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Name and legal structure. 1. Have you chosen a name for your business? 2. Have you chosen to operate as sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation? Business premises and location. 1. Have you found a suitable building in a location convenient for your customers? 2. Can the building be modified, for your needs, at a reasonable cost? 3. Will you have a lawyer check the zoning regulations and lease? Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell, or produce, or what services, you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need, to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business, you need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business, must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by three, this is the amount of cash you will need to cover operating expenses for three months. Deposit this amount in a savings account before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs to the total expenses for three months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for three months. By subtracting the totals of the lists, from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing, you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate, your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. 
Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month because of seasonal patterns and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following. Failure to recognize seasonal trends. Excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses. Too rapid expansion. And slow collection of accounts if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion. If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a training business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea and do as much as you can yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, here are your three free gifts. 1. An extensive business plan template that you can download and use for a training business. 2. Small business management software allows you to plan your startup expenses and sales and much more. 3. Book How to Start a Business from Scratch. A comprehensive manual that will walk you step by step through all the essential phases of starting a business. Go to the description below this video to get them now. These gifts are completely free, no strings attached. Okay, what do you get from this video? Thank you for watching. Please. Okay, it's a very complete guy. Yeah. But, uh, 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 I see that uh, if you try to follow all of this guy, <laughs> you 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 left the business. Uh, <laughs> Yes, is uh, the people who have an special instinct, and uh, I think that is the key. You know, the, the, mostly in El Salvador, uh, a woman says, I, "I want to sell pupusas and uh, get a, a local and start uh, uh, making pupusas and and uh, start to sell." Uh, Maybe yes, yes. We need to 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 take uh, seriously all of the questions, but uh, 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 all of the guy that there is a very very complete guy in the, all of the factors. But uh, uh, if you don't have the instinct, if you don't have the, the inside feeling that is going well. Uh, maybe you don't have to do nothing because it's been a failure, I think. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect. Yeah, actually, this is a very complete thing. Of course, it's impossible. I mean, here in El Salvador, as you say, even big companies sometimes they have problems, right? Sometimes they don't decide, don't have the right people, don't have the right channel, and they learn little by little. Uh, I mean, I have worked for huge companies and there are lots of problems sometimes i mean you see the buildings that are very nice and that happens right the communication problems uh budget problem not that they don't have the money but they don't plan ahead so things like that very good uh, any other comment on this teacher yep the in El Salvador we have a, a, a good problem with the many companies. When you have a company, for example, five years, 10 years, 50 years, and the 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 general problem is a model, financial model, because many the own the own uh, the company sell spend the money more than they win the company and don't return the money at the company that the company needed. This is a, when you have a, a, a company for 10 years or 15 years, when you have a young company, very young company, uh, I will be for example, uh, Pupuseria, yeah. but 
do you know what is marketing? What mean marketing for to play a, for to make a, a business? Many people don't have what is the meaning of marketing. Marketing only gives you the two objects. First object give a satisfaction to the customer and two object is a, give the money for the company. It is so easy. But if you don't know, or do you know the how how feel your customer? Yeah. And don't give the smile to the customer, the next you never win money. This is the real teacher in the yeah. Okay, that is true. So yeah, there are many things that we need to learn, right? We need to know how to do one thing or the other thing. The most of the business, as David was saying, uh, they are like like uh, small businesses. I mean, you want money and you want to run a business and you see that people are eating proposals, right? So you run that one. But just for bigger companies, it's a little bit more complex. I mean, and uh, remember that sometimes we also compare with uh, companies in other countries because sometimes, I mean, maybe we, once we finish the English classes, maybe we have the chance to go in and work with this company. So we need to be ready. So there are many points of view on this one and um, we need to be ready, right? We need to be ready for those kind of things. Any other comment on this? No more. Okay. So we're going to start reading actually about this one, planning a training session. So says, imagine that you just led a training session. Unfortunately, it didn't go as well as you hoped. First, you forgot to cover some important points in your presentation. Then you ran out of time to answer questions because you had to change your session on the fly to cover the points you'd missed. All in all, you're not sure that people learn what they needed to know and you wish you had a clearer plan for the session. So that's what we're gonna check about that one. So what is a training session plan? David, could you please help me with this one? Of course, teacher, what is a training session plan? A training session plan, also called a learning plan, it is an organized description of the activities and resources you're used to guide a group toward a specific learning objective. It details the subject matter that you teach, how long each section should take, the method of instructions for each topic covered, and the measures you use to check that people have learned what you need them to learn. It can be as simple as a brief outline or more complex with the scripts, prompts, a list of questions that you plan to ask. Good, what do you get on that one? Okay, it is important. It's important because what is a training session? Uh, we need to know what is, what is it? What we need to do in a training session. It, it, it is important. And uh, we need a guideline. We need an agenda, uh, a structured plan, something that uh, guide us in the develop of the training session, what what are the main objectives? What uh, uh, they need to learn, and how we can evaluate that they uh, learn what is supposed to, to, to be learned. It, it is important because uh, the people go to the to the training, but uh, it's out there. <laughs> Her mind is out there. So we need to evaluate, it is important. Evaluate uh, that they are learning. And, and this evaluation, I, I, I guess that is not at the end. It's in the middle, in the middle, in, in very, very ways, in many ways, uh, we need to evaluate that if they are, are learning, and they are learning what they supposed to, to be learning. It is very important. Very good, perfect. So that is it, I mean, uh, it's not just that they tell you you are going to deliver a training. It's, 
is a big deal, right? You need to uh, do a lot of work before, then during the session, you need to identify, see their faces, interact with everybody. And at the end, you need to evaluate it, if they actually uh, learned what they supposed to, to learn, right? And yeah, I guess if you do that for the first time, yeah, it's very difficult. But whenever you gain the experience, you know that you have to do certain things so you can achieve those goals, right? Good. The next one says, why use a training session plan? Erwin Lagos, please. Okay, Bishop. Why use a training season plan? It takes time to plan a good training season. However, you, you and training will benefit will benefit from this preparation. As you plan, you visual each step of the class. This helps to ensure that you throw about everything that you need to say. And you present and you present information in a geological order. You also be able to prepare for points that people might find difficult to understand. After your season, you can use your plan to work out what went well and what didn't so <clears throat> that you can adapt to for future lessons. Last a training season plan will be in evaluate for a substitute no substitute instructor if you can make it to class. Hey, what do you get on that one? Um, let me see, teacher. Why well, use a training season plan? But for me, is I have a a, a a good a good problem because I remember that season plan is with you have a plan with the leader time. For example, three month, four month, or for example, a. The summer time, okay. The summer time for me is so different. My 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 meaning so for the season plan for me, yeah, because it's only the time. But in this one, you can find that you have to to try to to share your information with the other people in the company. For me, I try to to understand that that can I explain that the. The, 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 I, I wrote in that moment, teacher. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that that is, uh, I mean, definitely, we, there are many concepts and many things that are in the air. So uh, this is like a plan whenever you are going to train. I mean, if you are going to deliver a training, this is like a plan that you need to have ahead, right? Before you actually move on and deliver the, the training, there are many things that we need to consider. So it's going to be about that one. And it's invaluable because I mean before you actually go and deliver the train you need to know what are the not only the topic but how you are going to try to to touch the audience right make them say ah oh, yeah that is something that we need to do and that is the current way so uh, it's not just I mean an expert sometimes uh, Sometimes they uh, they are able to be there in front of people and they know a lot of things, but sometimes they are not able to to convey the message, to transmit what they need to transmit. So that is a, a very important thing. Okay, the next one says how to develop a session plan. This is just about the plan, of course. To develop a session plan, it's useful to use a standard training plan template. So that is the first thing that we need to do, to create like a template for the planning. This is just for the planning. This helps you organize material consistently, over sessions, and avoid duplicating topics. You can download, well, there is a template there. I will send you the link so you can get the template there in case you want to use it. Remember that on Friday, you will deliver a, a training or a workshop or anything that you want to teach to our peers here in the class. So then we have uh, steps for you to do this kind of things. So uh, Juan Miguel, could you please help us with the step number one for you to create a plan? Yeah, step number one, define learning objectives. Your first step is to specify what you want your trainees to learn and determine how you will measure this. 
think about these questions. What are the most important concepts or skills that trainees need to understand by the end of the class? Why are these concept, concepts and skills important? How will you know that they have understood this correctly? Tip number one, you can use the ABCD learning objectives model to set a training ob objective that comprehensively addresses your learner's needs. This helps you understand your audience, define the behavior needed at the end of the session, specify the conditions under which knowledge will be used and determine the degree of knowledge needed. Tip number two, you should only have one or two learning objectives for each class. If you have more, you are likely to have too much information to cover and trainees may feel overwhelmed with information. Good, what did you get from this part? Um, like, um, like in this course, yeah, because it's a kind of training, yeah, obviously that is uh, to learn English. You as a teacher or as instructor, you have to define the learning objectives. Yeah, but in this case, they are defined by INSAFOR and you follow this guidance, yeah? But why is this important? Because you have a, the, the specific information about what will you teach or what will information will you deliver to your trainees or to your students in order to understand each uh, topic in obviously each class that you will deliver. And um, I, I, I like the last, the, the second tip that uh, it mentioned about if you have more than two objectives, to learning objectives, you have too much information and the students or the trainees could be uh, or could feel overwhelmed with this situation. So uh, you have to uh, maybe uh, to split yeah, the, the, the main topic of, of the training in order to uh, this kind of splits of, or this kind of subtopics uh, attend one of them, one of, uh -huh, one of these uh, subtopics attend to only one or at least two learning objectives because uh, you have, you are clear what you will deliver and the trainees, they have clear what they um, what they will learn yeah in order to obviously to understand better the class and to focus more uh, specific in some uh, maybe some parts of the class okay very good perfect so yes uh, these things are very important these questions I mean these are things that you can do yourself whenever you are going to deliver a training. And uh, the answer for that one is going to help you uh, focus, uh, create a path on what you want to do. And this is a very good uh, objective model. I mean, the audience, the audience that you're going to have, of course, is going to be different. Even if it's the same topic, it's going to be different the way that you are going to deliver and that one if the audience is different. The behavior needed at the end of the session, at the end. So the change, the impact that you are going to have in this audience, the conditions under which this knowledge will be used. I mean, it's going to be for work, it's going to be under pressure, it's going to be a financial thing. They need to be careful on, on numbers, figures, things like that. The degree of knowledge needed. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are different levels of knowledge that you 
want to transmit. As we ch uh, checked in the video yesterday, I mean, uh, the girl was saying that sometimes uh, a webinar is just to provide information, general information. A masterclass is when an expert is going to provide you detailed information on this, uh, I mean, valuable information. A workshop is when somebody is going to be there with you and guide you step by step. So you will be able to achieve the goal to create a process of things like that one. So yeah, depending on that one, that is what you're going to choose. I mean, even to, to choose the, the kind of training that you are going to deliver. This is going to help you a lot. So this is a very good uh, model that we can follow. Good, number two, this is going to be for, let me just check, Jose Rivas. Not possible, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. okay. Uh, clarify key topics and related concepts. Your class will focus on a few central ideas or skills, but you'll need to explain related concepts to reach your learning objectives. These your key topics and their related concepts, and then group them together. For example, using an, an, an affinity di di diagram. 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 Uh -huh. diagram. Diagram, yeah. Diagram, okay. To show how they are connected. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, when you have a, maybe a training, a training plan, uh, obviously you have to, to uh, separate the, the, maybe the, the main topics are the, the section or steps of the, of the training, I, I think. So uh, every, every topic or every uh, central idea, uh, have you you can uh, how do you say the drop down maybe the, the the all the content of that section so you you have uh, when you are at a training it's like a maybe how do you say indice index in, in an index in a document when you can show a the section and all the the objectives or the topics related of that uh, that main topic. So I think that that is. Okay, very good. So yes, you need to clarify not only the main skills, the main topic that you are going to deliver. Uh, there are other concepts. Uh, there are other things that might be related with the main uh, idea, the main topic that you would present. And it's important for you to, to bring those, to present these um, maybe as a glossary or uh, sometimes some people they say they send some information in advance so everybody is related with the concept before so there are many things that you can do but it's important that one not only don't assume do you remember that in a video also we checked that we cannot assume that they know anything about that one you need to assume that they know nothing. Remember that there are different people with different levels of knowledge, different um, studies, things like that, that is going to impact the, the training. So you need to bring everything that is related. And of course, uh, they will understand better that one. Good. Number three says, step three, organize material. Dora Elizabeth. Step three, organize each material. Once you have a general idea of what you need to cover, draft a lesson online. List all of the points and you need to cover in the order in which all you all cover them. Use the five learning circle. Cycle. To cycle uh, to link information to train existing skills and knowledge. This will help them put into a person, personal context, which in turn will help them retain experience. Now, insert the information from your outline into your training plan template. Check back against your initial brainstorming documents to make sure to make 
the government to make sure that you cover everything that you need to say. Also, compare your temple with your objectives in the for the session to make sure that you you'll achieve the thing. Okay, what do you get in that one? Is uh, prepare uh, the material, uh, give a, a training in the the material. Most uh, must be a uh, confirm the achieves the training. Okay, so mm -hmm. yeah, probably, uh, well, the material, sometimes depending on the topic, you are going to find a lot of material, but sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes you are not going to find a lot of material and you need to create your own. You need to create your own dynamics, your own, own templates, your own presentation with, I mean, typing everything by yourself. So uh, you need to organize that depending on, uh, what you are going to present. Remember that we say that it has to have an order. Whenever we were discussing about presentation, uh, there should be uh, an order. So uh, over everything is related and you will be able to check into that one. And I'm curious about this one. I don't remember what is this about. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Here's it, the 5E learning cycles. Uh, let's re uh, read into that one. Let's see. Uh, Ramon, are you able to read into this one? Oh, it's not possible. Let me just check here. Yeah, I need to log in. Okay, I'm going to send you that one with my login so you will be able to check into that one. Uh, let's move on to the uh, number four. Let's see. Ileana Giselle. Okay, teacher. Step four, plan presentation techniques. Now think about how you will teach this material to your students. It's best to use several different presentation approaches to keep students engaged and to appeal to people with different learning styles. This is very important because learning styles vary widely. Consider using these activities in your training session. Lectures, I read them all, teacher, or just? Just lectures. Just lectures, okay. Consider using these activities in your training session. Lectures are ideal for introducing a topic. Keep lectures to 30 minutes or less and summarize the important points at the beginning and at the beginning and end. You may want to use a guest speaker if the topic is highly specialized. Very good, what do you get on this part? That is very important, uh, teacher, this part because um, Maybe you have a group of students or, or a team in work or, or, or whatever. And we have to remember that uh, every person is like a different word. Every mind is very different. So we learn in different ways. And for example, maybe I, I like to, or I learn faster, uh, through videos or I don't know and maybe someone uh, learns faster through lectures like the like the like the like the example so it's very important to identify um, because it's part of the strategy or, or plan to identify a, a what kind of of learning style you are going to use to keep your group or your team engage and at the end they they well the 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 objective is that they they have to learn something new so if you choose the correct technique um maybe you can uh, have best results at the end of the of the of the presentation Okay, very good. Perfect. So that is true. I mean, uh, there are different techniques. Uh, we also discussed that before. And also we checked that there are different learning styles. 
we say that sometimes you can be a visual or learning by doing, there are many. So, uh, and we need to consider that one. Do you remember that we discussed that one, right? So we need to consider everything together. And the first one, yeah, lectures is, is something that is very important. In English, I use it a lot because, I mean, you are able to practice, read and things like that. But whenever you are doing this with a topic that is not to practice the language, I mean, it might be vary the way that you're gonna use it. So, and there are many other techniques that we're going to check into the activities. I mean, that we're going to check below here before, uh, of course, we're gonna check about the attendance. Okay, let's see. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Present. Mejía. Okay, good. Present teacher. And uh, Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Yanari Cortez Díaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Good, perfect. So let's continue checking about this. Okay, and activities. Here we go. Okay, so the other three activities are going to be for Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Okay, teacher. Okay. So. Uh, demonstration. Well, it says demonstration. I don't know what uh, it says demonstration, but it's demonstration. Demonstration. <laughs> Work best when you need to show the steps in a process to or task. Learners can try the task of out for themselves, or you can demonstrate it in front of the group. Uh, I continue? Yeah, discussions and online learning. Those are yours. Okay, okay excellent. Uh, discussions and they wait are useful after the lecture because they allow trainer, trainees to ask questions about the concept that they have just learned Consider handing out a list of questions or topics to prompt from a discussion. Online learning is helpful with the trainees need to gain practical experience or IT skills. If they need to access video or audio material, or if quizzes and self-test activities will be useful. Okay, very good. What do you get on this one? Um, well, sure. Uh, to be honest, this is a part of the of the training. So they explain how the demonstration can be used, and um, for a group, uh, maybe you need to show uh, some step in process to or task earnings and try task out for themselves. So I guess that 
we don't have a lot of things to discuss. And then uh, uh, for discussions, make uh, maybe some lecture about the topic that you are uh, learning. And then uh, uh, that could help to, to check if the trainees are maybe uh, understand what they what they are what the, what they are in the training so in or oh, for online learning that means uh really um well that's a, a helpful because uh, you know uh, maybe they have any problem with a um, transportation for where the company is so they can connect whatever they want uh just they need some uh, internet connection, and um, uh, I don't know what else. Okay, very good. So these three things are very, very good demonstrations. You know, those are one of the best because whenever you are then in front of people and you show them how everything works or like a demo or something as the the job that Anna Claudia does, I mean, people understand better, right? You can explain a lot of things, you can have a lot of concept, a lot of graphics, but a demo is always a very good idea. Discussions and debates also, they work depending on the topic. Uh, for example, I don't use it here with you because I mean, mind that we're speaking about the abortion and I say, you, you are going to defend and you are going to be against, uh, I believe that it's better when you really believe something and you speak about that. But sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes it's going to be a very good way for everybody to get a conclusion into that one. And online learning is also good because you will be able to, to practice, to do some things by yourself. So nice, they are, they are very good. Last part of this one is going to be for, let's see, uh, Roberto Luis, is it possible for you? Not possible. William Ramirez. Not possible. Um, Anna Claudia. Sure. Good. Okay. Discussions, right? Uh, it will be a role play. Ah, okay. Role play. Uh, involves trainees acting out a new skill in a simulated environment and learn from feedback from other participants. Uh, in, in the other, until the very end of that part, please. Ah, okay. Uh, case studies? Small group teaching and then case okay. studies. Okay, small group teaching. Okay, helps learners clarify their understanding of the new information. They can explain it to one uh, to, uh, to one another in their own words and answer questions. And the other one, case studies too? Yes, please. Okay, case studies can help learners put the new information into context as they process the information and relate it to a situation that's relevant to them. They create mental connections that will help from recall the information later. Good, what do you get on that part? Uh, yeah, I always hated the role play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when really? We were in, yeah, when we were in training for this uh, job that I I realized now, um, I remember like three years ago, uh, we were like a few team uh, assisting Spanish and English. Um, most of the, the team uh, was, well, they are located in Pakistan and US. And part of the training or part of the grade for you to be graduated and, and, and be uh, authorized to work in this, we had to do role plays and we had a famous mock call. So one of the managers in PK in Pakistan, they um, were calling us and they were rude, they were cruel because they made the role of a customer, a tough customer. And we had to find it, fight and, and, and let them know what the, uh, uh, the, the good things the product has, et cetera, et cetera. It was so frustrated because the ones making those uh, 
uh, interviews because there were at the end inter type of interviews. Uh, Mm, they were so rude and, and and because they were like afraid we we were we will be like taking them cells because there were just two two people speaking Spanish they are from Pakistan they are from India and they speak Spanish and it, it, and in fact it was it was true we get a lot of uh, sales in Spanish, but I hate it because it was so frustrated with the robot, but it's a good strategy. And for the small group teaching, we did that with the same with our colleagues in order to better understand what to do. And case studies, uh, sometimes we took like, uh, yeah, a situation, a scenario that this situation happened to this customer, what would you do if this reach to you, stuff like that. But they are very helpful, but I maintain my position. I stand my <laughs> position that I hate role plays. Okay, very well. Yeah, sometimes they're tough, right? Depending, mm. I believe that depends on the experience that you have, but most of the time, role plays are difficult because, I mean, almost always is after you have learned something and it's mm -hmm. to evaluate right mm, a lot of interviewers are, are including role plays and that is the part that i hate of this <laughs> yeah yeah because you're nervous you, you want it's to a new job it's a new position you don't know what is uh, is about and they tell you do this do that sell me this ah, i hate that <laughs> <laughs> okay very good so uh, yes, these are activities that we can include. So as you can see, uh, you can choose depending on what we said before about the audience, about um, many things involved. So mm -hmm. I hope I can see some of those next Friday that you are going to <laughs> deliver <laughs> a little training. I want to I want to learn a lot of things that day. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And the next one says include evaluation. Of course, this is very important. Jarvin Isaac. Okay, teacher, number five, step number five, include evaluation. Now think about when you when you will check the student have understood Cape Boy build in the learning checks and question and ask more session and include this is your template. Also consider how you will evaluate the session. You may want to use formal measures and approve Align with care practice for level training evaluation model, or you may want to create a simple one or offline question that will help you tell if the session has been success successful. Okay, what do you get on this part? Okay, I think when you are doing a training, you have to be focused on what the thing that you are teaching about. And when you're gonna make a question, you have to be clear and you have to know if all the things that, that you do is clear. For example, your question have to be focused on what you are teaching, I think. Very good, so that's it. I mean, evaluation is always important. It doesn't matter what you do. Actually, we should be evaluating ourselves, right? So we can improve. We should be thinking about not only our jobs, but our life, right? So evaluation is an important part of life. And definitely whenever you deliver a training, you, uh, it's a very good idea for you to evaluate that, right? So, so you get the feedback so you can improve. Sometimes there are misunderstanding or sometimes you can adjust just a little thing so everything is going to be better. So evaluation is very good. Uh, okay. Next, actually, we're going to check about that one, I guess, tomorrow. So it's about service, training service. Okay. Number six says focus on timing. Roxana sends you. Not possible. Let's see then. Fernando Gonzalez. Ah, okay, you're here. Okay. Okay, so let's go with Roxana and then Fernando. Okay. okay. Are you okay? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Focus on timing. <laughs> timing. Finally, timing. Think. Finally, think about the timing of your session. 
Some concept or skill will take more time to master than others. So identify this up front and allow students extra time to absorb or practice the material. <clears throat> Record the time that you will allocate for each concept or section to your training plan and make sure that you allow allowed plenty plenty yeah plenty uh -huh. plenty thank you plenty of time to focus on the core concept if you don't have enough time <coughs> i'm sorry you can if go you and take some water if you want <laughs> <clears throat> if, if you don't have enough time, you'll need to run additional session or nar narrow is correct? Narrow, yeah. Or narrow your learning objectives and reduce the number of topics that you plan to cover. Note, you can use the same step to create a plan for an online training session. However, you'll want to allow extra time to learners to learn <clears throat> into the training platform, ask questions about it, and resolve any technical problems. You'll also need to include extra opportunities to check for comprehension because it can be harder to see if a student have fully understood the lesson when you are not in the same room as them. Ask frequent, frequent open-end questions to confirm understanding. Okay, what do you get in this one? Uh, do you feel okay? Is everything fine? Yeah, uh, okay. well, uh, I think that the paragraph uh, tried to uh, explain that uh, you need to uh, be carefully when you are uh, when you when you have a, a presenting when you have a, a master class for example and you need to uh, give enough time to the audience to um, receive the information. Maybe uh, you have to uh, be focused in your um, in your plan, in your training plan. But it's important um, ask to the audience if they have uh, the maybe yeah the comprehension. The thing is that. Uh, now we can um, talk about uh, interesting topic in a webinar or in a master class, but the objective is not um, well if the audience don't receive uh, the the information as you want. So you can explain a lot of time, and you can uh, explain spend time uh, creating a um, presentation or materials. But it's important when you uh, reserve uh, a specific time to understand if your audience get the message. So it's important uh, try to transmit in a, in a clear way and try to confirm if the other uh, person receive. Because uh, imagine, for example, in this class, if you are presenting, if you are um, teaching, but the rest of the audience are always spend time in another things, maybe you spend your time because uh, the message is not receiving, are not receiving, yeah. It's not it's being not received. received. Uh -huh. It's not, it's not receiving 
because uh, maybe the the audience is working in a, in another thing or so whatever the thing is that they don't get the message and when you are um work, when you are working in a presentation in a master class or webinar you need to uh, explain in a clear way and you need to uh, maybe try to give a one-on-one -on -one session maybe i think that it's, it's something like that because uh, you you try to uh, understand or 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 try to talk with the other uh, person if they are receiving the message so the paragraph mentioned that that you need to save time to confirm if the audience uh, receive and understand what are you saying okay very good so yes timing is very important because uh, at, at the beginning actually of this article it says right i might imagine that you are delivering on a train but at the end you were not able to um, to be sure that everything was understood or you didn't cover the whole topics because many questions arrived or you didn't plan ahead so definitely timing is uh, not only about starting on time and or finishing on time but also mm -hmm. about how much time you are going to spend in this activity or this other activity uh, what you are going to do with this or uh, any other thing like that so it's going to be very important so at the end the training is successful the thing is that when you are uh, given a training you well as a company or as a leader you in the future you need to receive um maybe a um result mm -hmm. a little training for work or for i don't know for studies or something like that so it's important not only give a training it's important also confirm if the training is receiving how you how you need in the future. Okay, that is true. I mean, yeah, it needs to impact. I mean, not only at the time of the training, but also mm -hmm. whenever they are doing the, the tasks, the duties that they have to do, right? So it's very important that part. Good, perfect, Roxanne. So it says example training session plan. This is a very good one because it's like an example. So uh, actually, I believe that David is very familiar with this kind of situations. And uh, it's because, I mean, teachers, they need to do that. Well, we need to do that one, right? So whenever you are going to, uh, to deliver a training, or a class or whatsoever, we need to create this thing. So we have an empty template and we need to fill it out. So, but for the ones that maybe have never seen something like that, this is like a, like the training session plan. In my, this is only the introduction, this is the main session, and this is the conclusion. And at the end, there is like a, a guide on that one. So we're going to start with the introduction, and this is going to be as we said for Fernando. Uh, example training session plan. Uh, the example below show as completed training session plan. Learning objective to teach new team members in a call center how to handle challenging customers calls more effectively. Effectively. Okay. Okay, tenemos, sorry. I know what <laughs> We is. have the next column, key point, training aids, tools, time, and learning check. Introduction, key point, open session. Introduce tutor, online instructor, explain housekeeping. And tools, handout showing session structure. Time, 10 minutes, and learning check, confirm that students understand the session format. Uh, point, 
employ, employees need to be able to handle difficult customer confident, confidently. Okay. Confident, okay. Uh, okay. Tools, recording of positive and negative customer calls, time, 30 minutes, and learning checks. Check that each training has given a response in both activities. And key point, when customers feel that they haven't had a positive interaction, they are more likely to switch suppliers and tools, circle activity. Ask each trainee for a comment on the recording. What words come to mind? How well are the recorder agents handling their calls and circle activity? Ask each trainee to share a negative call that they've experienced as a customer and to explain how they feel about it. And now have time. Yeah. Okay, very good. So what do you get on this first part uh, of the example of this training session plan? Um, well, it's, it's, in a it's in a structure to follow for, for, um, for training session. So and the, the example is in the call center, but um, I think that in other kind of world, so it's, it's different, the, the, the key point. The key point, the tools, and the and the time, but the structure is the same. It's a good structure to follow for, uh, for give an effective and appropriate training to, to your workforce. Very good. So that is true. Uh, this is a very nice thing because you can adapt this template to any kind of training that you are going to prepare, right? So, uh, in I really like. The, the headers, I mean, key points. So what are exactly what you're looking to do? Um, the tools, the time, and what you're going to check at the end of the class. And also uh, remember that there is going to be an objective, one or two objectives per class or per session plan, per session training, I mean, uh, is going to be more than enough. Also remember that here, whenever we use, uh, we are going to describe the app. The objective, it has to be uh, in an infinity way. So that is in English, in Spanish, in uh, any language, actually. Okay. So to teach new team members in a call center how to handle challenging customer calls more effectively. Well, this is very challenging, right? Um, Ana Claudia knows that sometimes there are different people. Uh, they are very difficult sometimes, even when they want to purchase, they want the service, they want the support, sometimes it's difficult. So, and this is uh, one of the biggest problems that the call center industry has. Because of course, when a customer is angry, uh, you, I mean, you are listening to that person and maybe you can keep it personal, but it shouldn't be that way. So it's a very good example. And then, uh, the activities are very nice. Circle activity. Ask uh, each trainee for a comment on the recording. So they are going to listen to some calls and what words comes to your mind. That's interesting. How well are the recorded agents handle the calls? Provide opinions. And the circle activity. Uh, ask each trainee to share negative calls they've experienced as a customer. Those are very good as well. So this is a very good as an introduction. And there we have 40 minutes on the first part. So then we have the main session. Heidi, could you please help me reading this part? Not possible. Uh, Suleyma Ivan. Not possible. William Ramirez. Okay, it's not possible. Juan Miguel Brand. Me, teacher. Uh, okay, who says? Francisco teacher. Okay, go ahead, please, please, yeah. Okay, main session. Run through the full call process. Uh, answer call and determine customer need. Get gather customer information, information. Analyze customer emotion. Present solution based based on customer need and group activity. Trainee discuss how to assess the need and information during the call. Pay activity, use role play to practice difficult calls. 
Uh, timing 60 minutes. Check that trainee come, comes up with a variety of realistic response. Ensure that each trainee demonstrate on successful interaction. Very good. So what do you get on this? Uh, uh, well, uh, this is a, a plan for a, a, a is a, a, a some example, right, teacher, for a, a plan of uh, training, right? Yeah. So this is uh, the first part was like the introduction, and this part is like the main session. The main, so, the main session, or the, yeah. the, the main topic. Uh, that they the main develop. topic. Okay. Right. Uh, I think it is the 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 information uh, show in this uh, in this plan is is very uh, useful uh, because uh, uh, there are uh, order to present uh, every topic or to present a, a every. Uh, how do you say etapa, teacher? Um, there are many ways. Oh, that. Oh, every oh, level, uh, uh, every stage. part, every part, every okay. part, and for for a, a trainee uh, is uh, is a, a a good tools. Really, it's a good tools for uh, make a good presentation because uh, uh, I think uh, uh, they plan have uh, a specific point to treat in in uh, in the other uh, uh, has uh, activities for uh, uh, to practice uh, the knowledge that the people uh, getting in the in the training Okay, very good. So yes, this is a very interesting thing because then you we can see the second part, which is like the main. Uh, I was checking about this one and maybe the only problem that I have with this part is that 60 minutes is too much time for this one. I mean, uh, paid activity, role plays, mm, and then trainee discuss how to assess needs. I guess it's too much time for these activities. Anyways, that depends on the audience, right? It depends if they are brand new, um, agents that are going to take calls or if they are like many many people i mean it's going to definitely impact these things but it's a very good thing because at the end it says ensure that each trainee demonstrates one successful interaction it means that maybe at the beginning they might have some uh, mistakes some things but at the end they should be showing something good right even when the calls are kind of challenging um they should be able to to handle those in a very good way and uh, specified activities are kind of good as well okay the last one is the conclusion um let's see who can do this marcus okay a uh, conclusion summarize practical method of handling difficult color wrap up question Evaluation. Group summer activity student list the solution that they found most effective and why on flip chart. Open question session. Oh, sorry, teacher. <laughs> I think I had to read. Don't worry. Way. You can read whatever you want and we can analyze them. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to start again. Okay. Summarize practical method of handling difficult color. Um, groups. Summary activity student list the solution and they found most affecting and why on the flipboard. There means check that each group has at least three response of their flip chart. Wrap up question and open question session and means check your question evaluation. Pass out the questionnaire to evaluate the effectiveness of the session. 10 minutes. Collect a questionnaire from each trainee. Okay, what do you get on this part? Okay, I understand that it's important to um, wrap up all the points, all the, all the key points, the conclusions. So, for example, we can create a questionnaire and see the 
most common questions and answer them. And so we can evaluate that questionnaire and collect all the questionnaire from the trainees. And that's why, uh, that's how we can evaluate if they learn from the, from the training. Yeah, it's kind of very, very punctual, right? That is very good about this one. I mean, summarize practical, met practical methods of handling difficult colors. And so everybody provides the most effective uh, answer. So that is a very good thing. The one that you like the most. Then the wrap-up questions, of course, if they have questions. And at the end, the evaluation that it should be included. So as you can see here, this is a very easy um, template that we can follow whenever we want to create a presentation or to deliver the training. And uh, yeah, the three main topics, I mean, maybe some other trainings are more complex, but this one is kind of very basic. Uh, the introduction and then the, the main topic and then the conclusion. And then uh, it says key points. Um, so these are like the summarize of the whole article that we're reading here. So let me see. Who can read this part? Everybody has read a little bit at least, right? So uh, let's start, let's go and move on with uh, David. Okay, key points. A training session plan provides a useful format for thinking about the activities and resources you use to, give, to guide a group toward learning objectives. To create an effective training session plan, take the following steps. Step one, define your objectives. Step two, clarify key topics in related concepts. Step three, organize material. Step four, plan presentation techniques. Step five, include evaluations. Step six, focus on timing. Training session plans take time to create, but they ensure that the information you need to teach follows a logical sequence. This will help your students engage with it and ultimately understand and regain it, retain it. You can also train in session plans. No, sorry. You can also use training session plans for online training sessions. Although you will need to allow extra time and include extra learning checks. At least it may harder, may be harder to go whether the students have understood all of your points. Okay, what do you get on this one? Okay, this is the main, uh, the backbone of the plan. There is a, what do you need to know? The first, uh, define your objectives. Well, why are you doing the training? Then, uh, the key topics need to be clarified and the related concept with these key topics too. Then uh, the material needs to be organized. If you need to give copies to the attenders, attendees, uh, it's important. Then there is the, the structure, the structure, the main structure, and uh, is a, a specific guide of how do you do, do your trainings session plan. If uh, you have a training session without a, a, a plan, it's a, a, everything but not a training session. Uh, you don't know what is your objective. You don't know what uh, you, what the uh, attenders learn. It's important to keep this and, and insist in include evaluations and uh, techniques, presentations, and focus on timing. Timing is very important. Uh, maybe short sessions and uh, some relaxed in short sessions and something like that uh, to best assimilate the, the objective that you are looking for. It is uh, the, 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 the mind structure. Okay, very good. 
So very interesting because, I mean, in this summarize, we can see exactly everything that we have checked before and what you need to do, right? So you need to be careful on these kind of things. And then, uh, I mean, if you follow a plan, definitely everything is going to be much, much better, right? So um, I'm going to show, I'm going to send you this link whenever we finish the class. Actually, I can send you that right now. Uh, so you can have that there. Remember that on Friday, uh, you are going to deliver training. So I really, I really would like to, to listen to, to you, right? And check what you want to uh, show. There is no limit of time. So that's why we're going to do it on Friday. So if somebody is missing, we can finish uh, next Monday. Monday is going to be, remember, the last class. And we will be also doing the survey, the survey from Insofarb. Also remember that we need to finish the platform this uh, Sunday, okay? So it's important for, for you to finish that one just in case something is missing. Uh, everybody has seen also the message that we will be uh, taking the next course the next year, right? So, so whenever we finish on Monday, we will be on vacation at least from English classes, right? Because I know that maybe you have to do lots of other things. Okay, so let's do free practice today. We haven't had the time to do that uh, during this module, so let's do it right now. So um, well, first of all, I want to ask you, do you have any topic that you would like to discuss? Free topic, whatever you want to discuss about it. Free topic. Or we can discuss about anything else. For example, uh, what is the the things that you like the most to, that you, I mean, you live here in Salvador. What is the best of living here in El Salvador for you? Okay, the, uh, there are many things that are the best. Uh, some of them is uh, you can go to the mountains, uh, you can go to the beach and in the same day. There are uh, countries that uh, you need to take a plane to go to the beach. And uh, uh, here is, it, it's easy. You can go in your car, you can go in a bus. Uh, there are many, many ways that you can go to the beach in 22 hours at, uh, uh, at much. You, 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 you get the the beach and, and you can uh, enjoy and uh, the the mountains are near too and uh, uh, the water scene that is very very uh, uh, important and, and like so much is uh, the the weather the weather here is there are uh, some countries that are extremely hot and extremely cold and uh, some people get sick because it's too cold or get sick because it's uh, too hot and we have a, a, a special weather that uh, maybe uh, all of the time is uh, something the same and, and uh, it, it is important and uh, uh, it is important too that uh, uh, we can uh, people that are uh, worker, hard workers, because uh, I I go, for example, to uh, Honduras, and we want to eat something in a place and. Uh, it's closer, it's, and there are no more service. And you go here, and the, the people try to do something, try to give you something, and, and they try to attend you. This is it's, it's important. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, four years or maybe more, uh, the, the country was promoted in the, in the abroad like uh, the smile country it, it, it was a, a very special time and uh, the people was uh, 
join it, we work together, we see the ads of, uh, for example, uh, Cola Champagne, the first, the first uh, ads of Cola Champagne was talking about the, this uh, unity of the, there was uh, somebody with a car that have a problem with the car and all the people go and help and something like that. This was a, a special time. The, the, we have a, before the, the war, before the, 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 the politician ruined the country uh, because this, this war was not us. This war, this war was for, for a strange reason. But uh, before that war, the, the country was so beautiful, so kind of people and uh, so gentle, it's, it's, it's special. And uh, we live without fear. We go through the rivers and uh, very, very special. But it still is a, a very, very good place to live in Salvador, yes. Okay, very good, perfect. So yeah, you are right. There are so the things that you say are very good. I have always wanted to do the challenge of going to the mountains and then to the beach, or the opposite. Maybe it's better the opposite. Go to the beach and then to the mountain on the same day, and that is that is a challenge. Yeah, that is something that we can do here. I mean, it's possible. You can move from one place to another in a very short time and in some other countries i mean is that is not possible at all. and even if you go to the beach you are not able to to swim into the beach or do some activities right and the weather yeah it's good sometimes it's kind of hot sometimes the rain is kind of uh, too much but that is good. I mean, we have everything, right? Right now, it's starting like the winds and the cold. So that is a very good thing. Good, perfect. Thank you, David. Any other person? Why do you like to live in El Salvador? What is the best about living here? Nothing? Well, Hello, teacher. Teacher. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. one of the most important thing was mentioned for David, that is the name of the location, because you can move to the mountain and then 30 minutes uh, more, uh, you can uh, stay at the beach and depending on the traffic. And also uh, the family or friends live uh, are near to you and you can go out after the job or I don't know, maybe you have a, a, a night light. So that's okay. really good. Yeah, a lot of places to go, right? So here, I mean, it's a beautiful uh, place. And I mean, you can do whatever. I mean, if you want to go and dance, if you want to go to the nature, if you want to uh, do a lot of things, uh, here you are going to find, I, I guess, almost everything that you can do in a tropical country. Good, good. Um, any other? No, teacher, uh, for me, I think the food, for example, the, the pupusa, uh, one day I was really hungry, so I decided to buy some pupusa and uh, you can find it anywhere near by your R, so <laughs> it's important to to value the, the, the food that we have, the, the culture all the dishes that we have in, in our culture are very delicious and they identify us outside of the country so uh, that is a, a good uh, a thing that i like from this country actually that is a true um when you speak when you speak with people that have gone to other countries yeah the weather uh, is important of course family um but food is one of the most important, right? They come and they want something to it, something specific that in the place where they live, they cannot find it. So, and definitely proposals are the most popular. They need, they want to, to eat proposals. I remember that I, I used to work for a bank and uh, it was a German bank and the manager here, uh, it was uh, from Germany. 
And when he came, he was kind of thin, you know, like a regular German. But after, after three years, he was very fat. And he said, pupusas are so delicious. What can I do? Uh, I cannot stop eating pupusas. So he was very happy about that part, but he was kind of, I mean, it was difficult for him. Yeah, food is important. What other food is good here in El Salvador? We have pupusas that we know that is the top. <coughs> What what other things? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if popular, but uh, if you go, for example, to Los Angeles, the people ask you for pollo campero. <laughs> they expect, where are you from? I am from El Salvador. Okay, give me pollo campero. <laughs> they they respect that all of the 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 planes need to be some special. Uh, air freshener because the the, the 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 smell of the of the chicken in all of the plane is uh, there was a, a time that the, all the people was carrying pollo campero and the, the pollo campero in, in, in the USA is different it's not the same <laughs> there is a, a very popular uh, uh, meal and uh, the people know to that more than maybe Pollo Campero was born in, in, in Guatemala, but uh, the people know more in El Salvador. <laughs> yeah, it is very popular. I mean, if you go to a, a mall, I mean, here in Santa Ana, sometimes you go there and there are always somebody, I mean, there are people waiting there in line, right? Standing in line, waiting yes. for Pollo Campero. And, and it's like, I mean, there are a lot of places where you can go, but they really love Pollo Campero and they go and it doesn't matter if they have to wait. They really like that one. <laughs> that is true. Other food that is popular, that is from El Salvador, that you believe that is very nice food? The fruit, fruit and vegetable. Okay. What kind of fruit? Uh, mango, orange, sapote, and... Jocote. Pineapple. Yes. Jocote. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, jocotes are from here, right? So they are very popular. Uh, jicamas, you know, those are also. Loroco. Uh, yeah, that is very, very popular from here. I mean, pupusas mm -hmm. or hand soup. I mean, you need to put that one right. Very good. Yeah, there are some fruits. Mangoes are, I mean, delicious here. And uh, yeah, whenever you are in another country, sometimes it's possible to buy that kind of food, but it's very expensive, right? It's not. Yeah, it's very expensive. Well, in, now it's very expensive in El Salvador as well. So. <laughs> but in the other, in the in in Germany, it's too expensive. For um, one mango is a. Uh, Three euros of even uh, five euros. Yeah, that is, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's something that is uh, extravagant, right? Something that you yeah. don't eat every day that is like yeah. exquisite. So very good. And that is true. I mean, here now I went to the market, you know, in the morning. And yes, there are, I mean, prices right now are very high. So... Yeah, in the past was very easy. And in my house, it's going to be in the future. So whenever you have the chance to eat something, let's eat it, right? Because we don't know if in the future we're going to be able to eat that kind of fruit, that kind of vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Good. What other food from El Salvador do you like? Nothing else. Eat because you like a tortuga. <laughs> oh, I love that one. You know, it's very good. With beans and hot sauce. Oh my oh, god! Oh my goodness, that <laughs> is good. I'm hungry already. <laughs> <laughs> and also empanadas. Those are very good and very popular as well. Yeah. yeah. I love that from here. And do you do you like the ones with milk and beans or the other ones that are like with oil, uh, with meat inside and potato? Uh, you say pastelitos. 
Those ones, uh huh? Both. Yeah. Sweet both. And, and salad. Both are very <laughs> delicious. Very, yeah, those are very nice and very, very from El Salvador, right? So that is very yeah. unique. Yeah, I guess tomorrow mm -hmm. I will look for something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you say um, eh, atol de elote in English? That is corn atol. Corn. That is it. Corn. corn stuff or something like that. Yeah. That's very yeah. delicious too. Very, yeah. Those kind of things are very, very popular and very, I mean, people really like that one. Well, most of the, most of the typicals uh, that are made from, from corn, I think that they are, they are very delicious. That is so true. I mean, it's because here in El Salvador, I mean, long, long time ago, that was one of the most popular, uh, I don't know, is corn, is that a vegetable or is it a fruit? I don't know. Mm, I think it's a vegetable. A vegetable, right? So yeah. I'm I'm more inclined as a vegetable because of the way that we eat it. That I don't know exactly but what it's like. That. Avocado. People say that avocado is a fruit, not a vegetable. That is true. I mean, it's like it's like a fruit, right? But our oh, avocados actually they are very very good, right? Yeah. Nice, perfect. Thank you. And any other thing? I mean, I really like a lot of things. I don't know you, but I love mora soup. That is for me one thing that is amazing. I need to eat that one, I guess. Uh, chipilins also, I really love that one. Uh, pata soup, ah, uh, that is amazing. I'm hungry already, you know. So there are a lot of things that you can eat here. Maybe you can eat those in other countries, uh, but I mean, not the same, right? It's definitely not going to be the same. Okay. This is this is okay. this is a Luna no te vayas. Moon don't go. <laughs> Moon don't go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fernando, okay. tell me. But, but, uh, I I noticed when when the pandemic started, after a couple of months, the flavor of the tapics it changed. Really? Do you think? Because, yeah. Well, it was different or not because <laughs> maybe people shake their hands or <laughs> I don't know what's the reason but uh, <laughs> uh, for example um, the pupusas for me uh, it's a tip it's, it's typical for for weekend yeah it's typ typical feature typical or typical 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 it's typical for for a weekend and the pupusaria or <laughs> pupusas Pusas shop store. How do I say pusaria? You can say pupusa store. Pusa store. <laughs> okay, in pupusa stores. Uh, my favorite, I I I think that flavor was changed a, a little, but maybe because you know all the the ingredient was sterilized and they use um I don't know alcohol for cleaning the 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 recipients i don't know but uh in in other things that i noticed that it's in hojitas you know hojitas bread oh. hojitas i don't get it uh bread it, it's ah, like, like super uh, like pastry sorry it's like bread sweet bread like what? pastry yeah like pastry Pastry. Pastry is the word for that kind of bread. Oh, pastry. Yeah. I didn't know it. Can you write past pastry? Yeah, it's a P A S T R Y. Pastry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in 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 the pandemic, it really changed that 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 the form of the of the bread. It was more. I don't know. Um, Simple, teacher. A uh, simple, very simple. simple. No flavor, huh? No, fl uh, no flavor, uh -huh. no flavor, and the, and the, the texture is was different, and it was thin, and before that it was more, you know, or a little fat. I don't know, but the flavor was different. Mm, but okay. today we return to the the original flavor <laughs> because the pandemic was 
was done. Yeah, that's why uh, something I was going to ask you. So if you feel that now everything is back to normal. Okay, very interesting. I don't remember if I noticed a change. Maybe here was not big deal. And maybe it's because I used to cook a lot, you know. Um, but pupusas, yes, of course, that is something that you need to go out and buy them. But uh, the rest of the things, sometimes I always try to do myself. But yeah, it's possible, you know, because many things changed and many uh, things were kind of different. People were more careful and they handle things in different ways. So definitely it's possible that it changed. So interesting, I didn't notice that part. Good. Any other reason why you like to live in El Salvador a lot? Okay. In my opinion, uh, people is very is very nice. I mean, I know that has changed. I mean, in the past, uh, we were different, more friendly, and we helped a lot. I know that now it's different. It's difficult. For example, if you are on the street and somebody has a problem there. Sometimes you think, ah, maybe this is dangerous, right? Uh, things has changed in some things, but still, even though people are great here, we are very happy. Even when we don't have a lot of things like European people, we don't travel around the world, things like that. But we are very happy. So that is, I believe, one of the most important things here in El Salvador. Very nice. Perfect, my friends. So this was the class of tonight. Do you have any questions before we finish? Okay, so let's check the attendance and then let's go to bed. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. For you is the 101 of today, uh, William. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Okay. Perfect, thank you. So it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well and see you tomorrow. Dream in English. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Uh, of December course. Tomorrow we have to, to deliver a training. Uh, on yeah. Friday. Friday. Ah, oh, sorry. On Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It could be of any topic. Uh, yeah, about whatsoever. Just remember that the training is the purpose of a training is to teach um, the audience, in this case, the class, uh, to teach uh, something, something new, right? Or some, or develop a skill to show something, something new. So uh, that is the only thing. But yeah, that will be on Friday. Perfect, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello, Heidi. Do you have any questions? Hello.
no questions.